Hello, my name is Samantha Banchik and I'm a product manager here at Databricks. And today we'll be talking about how you can maximize your productivity by using our Databricks Assistant. So show of hands here, how many people here have actually used the Assistant? Oh, wow, awesome, okay. So as a recap, for those of you who've used it before, um, or if you're new, the Databricks Assistant is our LLM-based authoring assistant that's now embedded within the entire Databricks platform. We started with our most popular experiences first, integrating it into our notebooks, the SQL editor, and the file editor. But recently, we've been expanding our coverage and now also offer full AI assistance within our workflows and jobs pages so that you can use the assistant to actually diagnose job errors. Today, we'll be talking about how you can use the assistant to maximize your productivity, allowing you to spend less time on mundane tasks and more time getting actionable insights from your data. But what exactly in particular makes the assistant so special and specialized for enterprise data in particular? Every company out there is integrating AI or LLM-based assistants into their products, and we here at Databricks are no exception. However, we can do things other companies can't and leverage all of your company-specific data that you've already placed within Databricks. And we do this by using what we're calling Databricks IQ. Databricks IQ is the underlying data intelligence engine powering the entire Databricks ecosystem. We're able we're able to take in unique context from your specific organization. Things like schemas, jo jargon, org charts, data lineage can all be fed in directly into our LLM-based products uh, as context, allowing us to give you specialized, personalized recommendations. Before I get into a live demo, let's briefly touch upon some of our current adoption and positive feedback we've been hearing from our users. Since we went public preview in July of last year, we've been consistently growing and are actually one of the fastest products growing in terms of all of Databricks. And as you can see here, we also now have more, of all, more than half of all Databricks users actively using the Assistant. We surveyed a couple hundred of our users and found that for over 70% of them, they were able to save at least 30% of their time on any given task. And when asked about the productivity benefits of the Assistant, we found that most people found themselves more productive or much more productive when utilizing the Assistant. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see a number of different customer quotes, representing not only the variety of different assistants the assistant can offer, but also across a variety of different uh, organization sizes as well. With that being said, now that we understand a bit more about the assistant, how it, what makes it special in relation to Databricks IQ, and what some of our current customers are saying, let's take a look at the assistant in action. So I'm gonna just briefly switch over here. I'm going to be spending the bulk of this demo in an actual notebook, and I'll do my best to demonstrate utilizing the Assistant using both Python and SQL. But to start, I thought I'd highlight some of our newer features shipped as our part of our new Assistant UI, otherwise known as our Global Assistant. So you can see here that I can now open up the Assistant in the top right-hand corner of any page here within Databricks. Conversations are now easier to manage more than ever. With the click of a button, I can create a new thread, and I can also go back and see all of my historic threads. These are conveniently sorted in the order in which they are last updated and also auto-named, either dependent on the context of your conversation or by the date in which they are created. So as you can see here, we are still actively working on fully integrating the assistant within every page here at Databricks, but it can still be really useful at helping you understand core Databricks capabilities. For example, I can ask it what, I'm gonna ask you to hold my mic for a second. And we can see here, we got a really fast, awesome, and hopefully accurate response. Uh, but as I mentioned, I'm gonna be spending the bulk of this demo um, within an actual notebook. Awesome. And I'm just gonna connect it to serverless. Um, so we can see here that so far, I've been doing this demo in dark mode. This is my preferred mode uh, for programming, but it's not really great at uh, forgiving demos. So historically, prior to the assistant, um, in order to change the setting of my uh, notebook, I would have to navigate to the top bar to figure out how to change this to light mode. I might actually have to leave my notebook in order to change my settings, but this is actually something that the assistant is also able to help with. So again, I'm gonna open up the assistant here and I'm simply going to ask it to change my settings to light mode. And we can see here that I was able to do exactly that um, with the simple, yeah, <laughs> thanks for the claps. Awesome. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be primarily using a data set focused on animal shelter data from one of the largest animal shelters in the US. 
The problem is I uploaded this table into Unity Catalog a long time ago, so I actually don't know where within my workspace this table is located. Something else the assistant is great at doing is helping you find tables or queries within your organization um, by integrating with our intelligent search. So I can use that by asking it to help me find my table. And I'm gonna use shelter as the search term. And we can see here it was actually able to get me the exact table I was looking for. And we actually do this um, by surfacing the most relevant tables for you. For those curious, relevancy is determined by user-specific factors such as popularity within your organization or by my specific user history. Something else the assistant is really great at helping you do is uh, better understand the tables that you have. So from here, I can simply ask it to describe this table for me. And we can see here it gave me some awesome SQL code that I can now run. So I'm going to copy this back over into my notebook and run it. And it's taking a second because this is the first cell I ran. Oh, great. Sorry, folks, this is a live demo, so sometimes things can go wrong. I'm going to try and run this one more time. Let's see if that fixes anything. Great. Okay. Luckily, I have a backup uh, in case this might happen. So I'm just going to go back to my slides. And we can see here, if I click play, Okay, I have one more backup in case this doesn't work. That if it works as expected, it'll not only offer me uh, how to describe my table using code, but also offers me a table description, which I could seamlessly copy over into my notebook, press play. And if it worked as expected, we would be able to see a column name um, with values for what each column represents in terms of data type and also comments at the very end. While the comments seem somewhat random, I actually was also able to use the assistant when I first uploaded my table into Unity Catalog to add AI-generated table descriptions and comments as well. I'm gonna try and go back into this notebook um, and rerun this cell one more time to see if it actually works. Awesome, and if it worked as expected the first time, this is exactly what you would see. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm also going to ask the assistant to let me see the first 10 rows of my table um, just so we can get a better understanding. So I'm going to say give or get me the first 10 rows. And we can see here the assistant was able to give me some SQL code again that I can run. I simply paste it over and run it. It's now working a lot faster. And we can see, thanks to the new result table, a really clear depiction of the first 10 rows of my data set. I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the last column within this data set, which is the sex upon outcome column here. This gives us information on both the animal's sex as well as information as uh, to whether or not the animal's actually been fixed. I find both of these values to be useful, but rather than having them within one column here, they could be really useful to isolate them into two. And I know I can do that using regular expressions. Um, I don't know about everyone else here, but for me personally, regular expressions are often time consuming to create and require a lot of trial and error. So this is actually something else I can ask the assistant to help me with. And we can see here momentarily that it'll not only generate me some code in order to do this, um, but it'll also tell me exactly how to do this. So I'm gonna copy over this code. I actually have a feeling this is not going to work because I don't think DF is defined. So I'm gonna ask the assistant to do that. Sorry folks, again, this is a live demo. Okay, and now I think if I add this code here, this should run as expected. And this is a little preview as to what might be coming later. 
I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna try it one more time again. All right, and we can see here that we're having another error. So I'm just gonna go back into my presentation to show you what this would look like if it was running properly. Again, doing the exact same thing I did before and asking for the assistant to use regular expressions to split up that last column. We should seamlessly be able to copy this code over and run the cell. And if it worked as expected, I should be able to scroll to the end and see that the assistant was successfully able to split up my two columns. All right, I'm gonna keep trying to get this to work um, within my notebook, so bear with me. In the next cell, I'm gonna close off the side panel for the rest of the presentation. Um, I have some code that a colleague actually gave to me. Uh, the problem is I don't really fully understand what exactly this code is doing. I can run and attempt to understand it myself. I can go and find this colleague and ask, but something else the assistant is actually really great at doing, I'm gonna pop up the side panel again, is actually explaining my code for me. So I can toggle on the inline assistant here because I wanna make sure it does this for this particular cell. And I can ask it to explain my code for me. And in the side panel, it'll provide me with a really detailed explanation as to what exactly is going on here. Now, in the future, when I share this notebook to my other coworkers, I don't want them to have to do this. Um, while I love my coworkers and I myself am guilty of doing this, they didn't properly document this code. Um, so something else the assistant is really great at doing is providing you with AI generated comments. So again, I'm gonna utilize the inline assistant here and ask it to document my code for me. And we can see here it immediately offered me um, an AI generated a comment for my code. Finally, uh, something else that I could do to further make it clear what exactly is going on in the cell is I can actually use AI to change the title of the cell. So if I simply click this button, yeah, I have a title for the cell which explains exactly what's going on within this code. And now I'm gonna close the side panel. One of the newer features that we recently shipped is AI generated autocomplete as you type. And we purposefully designed this feature to be super fast and highly accurate for Databricks specific code. So we can see here, I've given it a bit of a hint that I wanna to query to get only dogs that are yellow. And now if I press enter, I should be immediately met with some AI generated suggestions. You can see here it has select star and I'm just pressing tab to accept these. And it got both of the filters I asked for. Um, and I think it'll also give me a limit. There we go. And without me having to write anything myself, it was immediately able to offer me um, some text to complete suggestions for the exact query that I was looking for. And we can see it's accurate. It's only dogs that are yellow. The next two features that I'm going to show have actually yet to be released to customers. So you all here are some of the first people to actually see these live in action. One of the most popular use cases we've been seeing with the assistant is the ability to use it to diagnose errors. I don't know about everyone else here, but I'm a pretty fast typer. I'll oftentimes misspell column names, have rogue semicolons, or in this case, um, I actually have an extra comma here that shouldn't be there. Historically, I'd run the cell, it would error, and then I'd either use AI to fix it, or I'd go in and fix it myself. But we've done our best to better integrate the error diagnosis process within your actual cell. So you'll see here, this will happen really quickly. I'm gonna run my cell, and AI will immediately attempt to come up with a fix, which I can now accept and run within one button. And we can see it did exactly what I expected. Without me ever having to even think about how to adjust the SQL error myself, I was immediately met with an AI generated correction. Again, this next one is something that is yet to be uh, shipped to users. So you're some of the first people to be able to see this. We wanted to ensure that the assistant was able to also offer performance optimizations and recommendations for your queries. I won't go into too much detail here, but this is actually a not super performant query. We probably don't need to be selecting every single column. There's no limit here. And you can see here with this date time value, I'm doing some weird casing that's probably not required. So again, I can actually ask the assistant to optimize my query for me, even if I'm someone who's not super experienced with SQL. So I'm gonna to toggle on the inline assistant. I'm going to ask it to optimize my query. And you'll see here on the right-hand side, it was actually able to catch exact everything that I mentioned. Um, I'm gonna accept this so it's more readable. We now are only selecting a subset of columns. We have a limit added here and it was able to handle that date time value a lot more performantly. Um, for the remainder of this demo, I've been doing a lot of SQL code. So I'm gonna try and focus on doing Python specifically. One of the biggest value propositions for the assistant is being able to take your queries in natural language and convert them directly into code. So for this particular data set, I think it'd be interesting to know if the number of animals adopted is actually growing over time. So I'm gonna actually ask the assistant to help me find this out. Um, I'm going to toggle on the inline assistant.
And hopefully within a matter of seconds, you'll see here, it's able to get me exactly what I was asking for. I can accept and run this code. Oh, and we did have an error. It's because it shouldn't be using date of adoption. Um, okay, I'm gonna try and ask the assistant to do this for me one more time and see if it fixes it. Okay, let's try this one more time. I still don't think this will work, but it might actually catch a fix. Now, all right, I'm gonna go back to my presentation just so you can see what it looks like if it was actually running properly. So this time I used the side panel to ask the same question. And we can see here it was able to get me the exact code I was looking for as well as a description, which I can seamlessly copy over and run. And it gives me the number of animals adopted every single year. For this particular example, I think it would be really useful to be able to visualize this as a bar chart um, with a trend line. So something else the assistant is really great at doing is helping you create visualizations from your data, again, using exclusively natural language. Um, so I'm going to be using my pre-recorded example again. I oftentimes find that these visualizations are actually better than the ones I would have attempted to create myself. So I'm again telling the assistant using Plotly, create a bar chart and a trend line for the table I added above. We can see here it's doing a bunch of different things in order to make that happen. I'm gonna delete the installation because I don't really need that. And we can see there I was able to do exactly what I was asking for, which is create a bar chart and trend line for the data. Um, I'm just gonna go back and pause that really quickly so you all can get a better uh, look. So we can see here that I was able to properly offer me a title. Both axes are labeled and there's a really convenient legend on the right hand side. In the future, I can export this dashboard into, or export this visualization into other dashboards here at Databricks so that my colleagues can also take advantage of these AI generated charts. Awesome, so as a summary for everything we went over today, we showed a lot of different tools here within Databricks, showing you how you can change your settings, use intelligent search to find tables, explain and document your code. We also showed off some of our newer features with the uh, auto fix and um, optimizations for your queries. And finally, we showed you how you can create visualizations from your data. To learn more about our Databricks Assistant, you can check out some of our published blogs online and stay tuned for more exciting Gen AI related announcements here at Data and AI Summit. Thank you.